What's up, Airbnb Nation? I'm Danny, your friendly and knowledgeable Airbnb guru, and I'm going to take you through on this video a walkthrough and a demonstration of SmartBNB. They updated their platform. You can still use their old interface, and if you've been doing so, well then take this opportunity to upgrade. And I recommend you do so sooner than later because eventually the legacy version will be discontinued. Now, as always, if I don't cover something that you have a question about when you're going through this, there is a chat box on every page of Smart BNB. If you haven't used Smart BNB, what is it? It's predominantly for messages. It automates your messages. There's a lot of other things it does, but the thing that I use it for, and the thing that it's known for is automating messages. That's what we'll get into here. Plus, I'll give an overview of the dashboard and everything that you're gonna see when you log in. I will post a link down below that will get you directly to Smart PNB's new web page. So the first things first, you're going to want to log in. If you don't log in, you can try for 14 days. It's gonna automatically log me in. If you're gonna try or create a new account, use your Airbnb username and password. If you don't have a username and password, meaning you log in through Facebook, for example, well, create a username and password. Well, create it. You already have a username. It's your email. Create a password. It lets you connect to not only Smart BNB, but other systems which require a password. They can't remotely log in on your Facebook to Airbnb. This is what the dashboard looks like. Now, it's important to note that while it looks different and there have been added features to Smart BNB, in reality, not much has changed the folks who will notice the biggest change will be property managers, maybe folks with more than 10 properties. We'll get into exactly what has changed, what has been relocated, what the different symbols mean, but it is really the core system, it's identical. So don't be afraid, let's jump in. The dashboard, yeah, it looks nice, I don't really use it, to be honest. Uh, by the way, so I have, I manage six properties. I use Smart BNB in addition with other tools, but I use Smart BNB pretty regularly. So. I'm speaking from that perspective, someone with less than 10 properties. Someone with less than 10 properties, I don't use all of the features available to Smart BNB. So if you're someone, if you're a property manager with, with 200 uh, listings, you can still use Smart BNB. It's still very applicable, but there's gonna be things, there's gonna be functionality that you need that I don't cover. So this list, check-ins, check-outs, tasks, um, I'm gonna go straight to the inbox. So the inbox uh, also, I don't use it that much. I use Airbnb. Now, while I was getting re-familiar with Smart BNB, I went to my phone and I typed in Smart BNB on the web browser. And what I got, I have an Android. What I got is, you can see in the middle of the screen here, that is the Smart BNB looking app. Now, they don't have an app, they told me, but when I went to the website, it asked me if I wanted to create a shortcut. So I said yes. So now I click on the app and it brings me to something similar. It would be very nice if I can kind of disregard the Airbnb app and use this app only because the Airbnb app sucks, quite frankly. It's slow and it sucks. Uh, again, so I don't use this feature, though it does organize all your messages. If you had a million properties, you can filter them in a certain way like this. Okay, next is your properties. Uh, again, it's not a feature that I use very often. The properties, it's gonna quite simply list out your properties. Now you'll notice that this here is HomeAway and this is Airbnb. So they have a they have a booking uh, connection with Airbnb and HomeAway. HomeAway includes VRBO and a, and a bunch of other services that you can look into. It's under a family of, of HomeAway. Additionally, they're talking with booking.com in making a connection there. Now what these symbols mean, this is heartbeats. I'll click into one of these for an example. Heartbeats is kind of, uh, it's an optimization. It's a mini optimization, letting Airbnb system know, hey, this listing is live and active, ready to go. Our calendar is updated. We can accept guests. This one is stealth. Let's just click right into it. So when you go into your properties, uh, again, this is for property managers if you wanted to tag your properties. The sync button is if you have two of the same property, but it's on two different listings. So you wanna sync the calendars. This is what sync is for. Stealth is if you wanted to hide your listing at certain hours of the day. Let's say you want to hide your listing between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. You could come on to Stealth, activate it, and this will automatically be done with you, done for your listing within Smart BNB. Heartbeats, pin your listing every two hours and keep them updated for better visibility. So every listing should have heartbeats. Now it is to be noted that Stealth and heartbeats are only available for Airbnb. The calendar is nice. It's very nicely laid out. It looks amazing. 
Again, if you're a property manager with a bunch of listings, well, it's very convenient because Airbnb's calendar isn't so nice. So this basically is Airbnb's calendar with more functionality. There's a lot of filters up here. It's rather self-explanatory. If you click on any one of these reservations, you're gonna pop up the reservation details and the messages, etc. Now the meat and potatoes is the guest experience. This is where you have your messaging rules, your reviews, your questions. This is the dashboard you're gonna get. This part is useful here, next scheduled reviews. If you have a bad guest or your cleaners come back and say, hey, these guests left it super dirty, which is something that I wanna let future hosts know about. This guest left the space above average dirty, way above average dirty. Well, if that happens, then you can, with Airbnb, you gotta click, 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 there's like six, seven clicks you gotta to get to to, to to do a review. Um, this one, it just appears right here, next scheduled reviews. You can, I don't have any right now, but you can, if there was, you can click on it and you can simply say bad review. You could say delete this, I'll leave it manually. If it's a bad review, you can even say, wait to post this review until 30 seconds before the 14 day expiry period. So you, as you can imagine, that can come in handy. Additionally, let's say you had a bad guest and you have next scheduled messages. One of my messages is, hey guest, uh, please come back another time. I offer you this discount at this time. Well, I wanna delete these messages for bad reviewed guests. If a guest books and rebooks at the same place, then I want to delete some of the automated messages to make it more of a personalized experience. If they get, if they get how my messages are laid out, how smart BNB allows it, is it, it, it seems rather personal. And it is, I read all my messages. But if the same person books this, the same listing twice, well, some of the messages, they're gonna now feel inauthentic and they're gonna think back and say, oh, I thought I was having this really personal experience. I thought they were checking up on me. I send a message 24 hours after booking, so how, how they're doing, but it was just automated message. That feels, I feel, you know, I feel lied to or something like that. I've never had this issue happen, but this is where you would delete, edit, change messages. The messaging rules, this is the meat and potatoes. So a lot of these are already set up and ready to go for you when you get your smart BNB. I sell messages on my website that I have optimized the message process. There's 14 messages from beginning, uh, from booking inquiry to review reminder and friends and family discount that I've created. I'll put a link down below if you want to have a look. It increases the review rate of guests. So if normally six out of 10 guests review you, with my templates, I'm at 90% plus guests reviewing me. Additionally, more of those guests leave five-star reviews. That means that when you get a negative review, it has much less impact on your overall rating. This first page, um, it has all the rules here in one with different pages. Uh, what I would do is use, this is where you wanna use the filtering. So before booking, these are, these are messages that are kind of automatically put in here. New booking inquiry, um, hosts, and which properties is available for. We'll click into one of these here, and it's rather straightforward. If you wanna edit the title, edit here. The messages is here, here, the, the short codes. These are short codes. We'll get to that a little bit later, but as you can see, the short code personalizes the guest experience. Additionally, answers is, we'll get to that as well, it's actually the questions tab, and it detects, um, it's detecting different things that the guest might ask, for example, discounts. If a guest asks a discount, I have a automatic response that, I, that I'll send them through this sh short code here. Okay, timing, you can change the timing depending on what, what type of messages it is, the settings, so the neat thing about Air, uh, Smart BNB is that it was created for Airbnb. So there's gonna be a lot of these little technical detail things that are really going to set it apart from the other systems. So automatically, we'll get into some of those later, uh, but automatically pre-approve inquiries. This part is the only one that you'll want to add and subtract. For this listing, it's general, so it applies to all of my listings. But if you have some, uh, like a check-in message, for example, that you only want to apply to listings in New York, for example, you would only click those two listings. Okay, and here's a list of all the short codes. There's a bunch of them. In reality, you're gonna use 10 or less. But here, if, if you wanted to add some message in and you just couldn't, you're not sure, guests, okay. Now, the nice thing, um, with Smart BNB is you can add in a custom code. It's a nice feature and it, and it comes in handy on some fringe cases. The vast majority of you aren't gonna use it. I just wanna make you aware of the fact that a custom code, so, so this guest first name, that's rather common. Most of us are gonna use the guest first name. If you had some unique situation or something that was, gonna, that was calling for the same messages or the same formalities, well, you can, that isn't already listed in the existing short codes, you can create your own short code. Just know that feature is there. If we go back to messages, okay, before check-in, again, most of these are already in there for you. 
My recommendation is that you remove a lot of the messages that Smart PNB automates. They're too much. There's too much text in there. So my recommendation is that you edit the messages and take out as much text as possible. Move it into a digital guidebook. Now the review reminder comes standard with Smart PNB. I recommend you don't activate it because what I've noticed is when I activated review reminder and I asked guests who didn't leave a review for a review, more often than not, or more more often than I was comfortable with, I got a less than five star review. I didn't get a one or two star review, but they left a three or four star review. So I think what was going on was the guest had an okay experience, but there were some big negatives. They didn't want to leave a review. They just said, well, forget about it. But I insisted on them giving a review and they gave one and it was less than five stars. Five stars or bust. Four stars is like one star. Review rules, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Smart B&B will automatically review your guest. I have added in a few extra reviews. They come with two. I've added in two more. Take this as an opportunity to brand yourself. So I'm saying reservation jointly managed by Optimize My BNB and Baylo Airbnb Property Management. Just keep in mind, you can send it. I, I usually leave it one day after checkout. I always do, unless it's a negative review. Here's another one. I just like, I don't like to leave all the same exact reviews. I, I have four. Uh, there are tools out there where the guests can, and some guests do go and check how did you review prior guests. And I just, uh, it, it takes no work besides setting it up once, and now I have four reviews going. Questions. Now, this is a topic for a whole nother video, but it's a very useful feature. What questions does is when you're an Airbnb host, you get questions from guests all the time, very similar or even identical questions that you give very similar or even identical answers to. What questions does is it lets you automate this process. These are a lot of these questions are, come standard with Smart BNB. Okay, infants, discount requests, parking, things like this. These are very, very common things. But you can also add something specific to your neighborhood. For me, I have a list, two listings in Bronx, New York. Bronx is synonymous. Bronx is not synonymous with safety in many people's minds, though it is safe. To create new questions, you're going to press this add new. Now, if you type something in like discount, the data given was invalid. It's kind of a weird error, but what it means is we already, Smart BNB is telling you, hey, we already detect for this. So you don't need to create a rule for this. Let's create that safety rule. Add new, safety. Okay, first question, example questions. How safe is the neighborhood? Okay, so all these keywords that will pick up this, this question, test. If you want to test it, write an a example message from a phantom Airbnb guest and press detect question. So now you want to add a rule. You're going to add safety. Reply to questions about safety. Turn it on. Timing, whenever the question is asked, send the answer. This question is relevant before uh, a reservation is accepted and before check-in. While the guest is saying, it's not really relevant. Someone would be asking this before they get there. And the scope of this one is available not to all properties, just to the ones in New York, one and two. Everything's automatically saved on Smart BNB. If you saw that there was a little saved text that came up on the bottom right here. Back to messages. So now we have associated this artificial intelligence technique to safety. It looks like, unfortunately, my questions weren't saved. That's a bummer. Look for the follow-up answer to the question I will ask Smart BNB down in the notes. So the related rules, the, the, the AI that I have turned on is one, two, three. This means basically it's turned on. If uh, Wi-Fi, I have no related rules to Wi-Fi, so there's not going to be any automated smart question and answer associated to any questions with Wi-Fi. And that's true because no one asked me for my Wi-Fi because that's properly communicated. My place is not uh, suitable for infants, so that question is not turned on. Custom codes, we already went through. If you wanted to add a custom code, you will press Add New. I've already added one. It's Signature, so if I click Signature, I actually don't sign my Airbnb messages because of the way that the app is that you sign messages. It takes up another three lines of space. And if you want to scroll up and down the app, it makes it for a less than optimal user experience. But for the creation of this video, uh, if I type in 
2% signed signature, 2% signs, the capital S doesn't matter here in signature, it will sign it, Daniel Airbnb Superhost, owner of Baylor Airbnb Property Management. Okay, same things apply, condition, when is it sent, to which listings is it sent, is the scope. Now the canned codes, these are direct from Airbnb. Within the Airbnb app, you can actually create canned messages that you can send to guests. This was like pretty smart BNB, for example. So these are all my messages, but I still actually use them because it's quite simple. But for a lot of these, as you can see, uh, you can create a smart question for it. So the operations, what do I use this for? Is I use it to communicate cleaning instructions to my cleaning team. You could also use it to communicate if you do a live check-in, to communicate when your uh, live checker in or person is gonna has a task. You can use it to send them information. If you have a pool guy, let's say you're hot tub maintenance guy and you need a maintenance, regular maintenance, you can use this to automate that communication as well. Now, I don't use Smart BNB for tasks, though with everything in Smart BNB, it's very easy to figure out, add new. The team though, you're gonna to wanna to first, before you do anything, you're gonna to wanna to add the team. Add the teammates, and these are all cleaners for me. I use it for cleaning only, so these are all cleaners. If you add maintenance or check-in folks, you would add them here first. Add new, upper right corner. Okay, this is what that looks like. Notification rules is where I send to my cleaners. Notification of any new booking, cancellation, or alteration sent to the relevant cleaner for the relevant property. Now reminders are self-explanatory. My cleaning team, I really, make them their own unit. You're a business owner, you're in charge 100% of the cleanings. So you're in charge also of your own notifications besides the first one that I send you. So I don't use this. Now metrics is a few months away is what the Smart BNB team tells me. However, you can go to the old dashboard and there's something neat that I wanna show you. Early versus late bookings. The vertical axis is days in advance the reservation was made. The horizontal axis is the date of the reservation and the size of the bubble here is how much revenue was made. Now, what's more useful is if you do it for, let's say, this whole year. Well, when is our average booking? How many days in advance? This is a useful number to know when you use tools like Price Labs, which uh, occupancy is important and customizations depend on when is your average days in advance your booking is made. So you can see quite clearly from here, so this is zero to 50. Well, it's it's definitely below 50, right? So it's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it's good enough. So you can see um, it's definitely not zero, it's definitely not 50, it's somewhere in between. Well, 25 is somewhere in between, and we got all these bookings up here that skew it up a little bit. So it's my guess is it will be 30 to 35, and in the vast majority of markets, if you didn't have this data, the estimate would be 30. So in the vast majority of markets, 30 days is important, now I'll post a link down below for why that's important because it's not relevant to this video, but it is relevant to Airbnb hosting, calendar management, occupancy management, revenue maximization. Back on over to the Smart BNB dashboard. Now when with the redesign, they're going to add in home away metric. And this final bubble here is, there's just one thing I want to show you from here and it is connected accounts. This is how you're going to connect your account initially and add new accounts. Here's where I said, if you log in with Facebook, they give you little instructions for how to not log in with Facebook. User management isn't functional at this time, but it seems pretty cool. I, I don't know what Smart Beauty is gonna do with it, but if they're gonna do it, if they're gonna be able to give you your hosts access, for example, or other folks, cleaners limited access to your Smart BNB, uh, I have a cleaner in New York who doesn't want to create an Airbnb profile, so but it would be useful if she can and co-host and then she could, she could see the calendar and even respond to some messages with early and late check-ins. User management could come in handy for that. Now with settings, notifications, there's two unique things here. Receive notification emails when guest ID is required. So this is kind of a weird gray area where a guest wants to make a reservation but they haven't completed the steps necessary based on your requirements. Smart BNB will send you an email. Guest experience, something super cool that I didn't know about until I did this video is, check out this, enforce time restrictions between 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. The SRP is only gonna send my guests messages between their local time, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And this makes a lot of sense because if a guest is sleeping and I send a message at 2 or 3, 3 a.m., well, Airbnb only shows the most recent notification. So if that guest gets two notifications, let's say they inquire with three listings, they booked yours, and, and then you send them a message at 2 a.m. and then the host sends them a message at 6 a.m. saying from another listing saying something, well, the guest isn't gonna get your notification. And it's reasons like this, well, I really like Smart BNB. This is this is pretty awesome. It's just, it, Luckily, it's automatically turned on, but there's just so many of these details paid to Smart BNB, which is why I recommend it. I've used them for probably three or four years now. Highly recommend them. 
I hope this video was enjoyable. Give me the thumbs up and happy hosting.